Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at three different figures from Hia Toys. These are part of the AVP line, which by the way is my favorite of the Alien and Predator movies. I don't care, you can get mad at me, it's my favorite. We are looking at the Active Camo Celtic, the Active Camo Chopper, and the Active Camo Scar. And we're looking at them all together because they're all built on AVP bodies and they're all active camo. And we have a bunch of other ones to review too that are painted, but we want to get these ones done in this video because I like clear and blue figures. So we're going to do them first. Uh, very cool stuff going on here. Some updates uh, for Hia, which is a really nice thing and some pretty cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. So these guys are, these guys are all roughly the same size. They use a lot of the same parts. So we're just going to measure one of them. I don't need to measure all three. We're going to use Scar because he's my favorite. This guy, so all the guys, stands roughly, let's say just shy of 12 centimeters, which makes him pretty close to just shy of four and three quarter inches. And if you're not sure about how big these guys actually are, they're very tiny. They look like they're huge because of all the detail and everything, but they're tiny. This is the best Marvel Legends figure to ever be made, and here he is up against him. You can see, even in this particular translucent blue plastic style figure with a minimal paint job, there's more paint and quality packed into one little figure than in that whole super duper Marvel Legends figure. Alright, so for the aesthetic, we're going to go through all three of them, and then they all share the same articulation, so we're going to do that that way. Um, but, we have to do a question of the day first. Two questions. One, how do you feel about AVP? I think it was by far the most fun Predator movie. I get the argument for number one, but none of the other ones even come close to this one, if you ask me. This was by far the most fun, and the Predators were the coolest. And question number two, which Predator is your favorite? Are you just going to pick Scar because I said it and everyone else says it, or do you have a different? Uh, Celtic's pretty cool. I like the when he fought the alien. Uh, <laughs> they all did that, but with the mesh, you know, the grid. And uh, I also I also like the chopper, in fact, but I prefer Scar by far because he's got the clean faceplate, the nice basic helmet. That's my favorite. Okay, enough rambling. Let's talk about the aesthetics. You're probably noticing that they are molded in translucent blue plastic. This one's a little bit darker than this one. This one's somewhere in between the two, I would say. And it's definitely a unique look. And I think the reason they did this is because when they were molding the trans or the active camo figures in the clear plastic. It was yellowing too much and that's definitely a problem this blue look is very blue if you don't like that for the active camo look this is not for you we have to put that out there right now they're very blue very blue i happen to think they look freaking cool so i don't really care <laughs> like i don't need a bunch of clear figures anyway but i definitely get the accuracy uh complaint these should not be blue uh, like this, but they do look cool. So hey, if you like them, cool. If you don't, you're completely justified in not liking them. All right, let's dive into the individual details. They do have their unique armors, obviously the faceplate. This guy has his blaster up here, and it's got some hinges and a ball peg at the top, so that's cool. He's got the necklace piece, that's a separate piece that's going around here, it's not quite a necklace. His specific armor is all his. And obviously you can see where he has paint and where he doesn't have paint. You can see the predator details peeking through the half helmet thing. Very nicely detailed. They did continue it onto the back. Probably not quite as much, but you do have predator paint job on there in certain places. So aesthetically speaking, aside from the blue, he looks really, really cool. Let's go ahead and look at the chopper pred. He's got maybe a little bit more pred stuff poking through and a few different details. He actually does have the necklace rather than that chest strap piece and his iconic faceplate is there. He doesn't have his blaster and he does have his giant blades. So that's very nice. I like that. All the detail work is sculpted into his belt and everything just like you would expect and you can see which parts of him are showing and which parts are not. It's a little bit unique for each predator. Pretty good looking figures. Like these are, I can't get over how much detail they pack into figures this size. All right, and then we have the Celtic with his iconic face mask. And they really nailed those masks. I think they did a really good job. And he's got the different shoulder pads and things. Or maybe, do these, any of these have different shoulder pads? I think these guys all might have the same. Yeah, I think all three of these guys do. They might share all the same armor. Let me look real quick. I think they do have all the same armor. Except for like the gauntlets and face masks and then like the add-on pieces like the strap, uh, chest strap and the necklace. So yeah, these ones are very similar, which is partly why I was going to review them together. But very nicely detailed. 
all around look really cool. Only downside is the blue plastic. So aesthetically speaking, if you're not counting the blue, I'll give them a nine. They look great. If you're counting the blue like five, cause they shouldn't be very blue. So that's definitely a valid concern. Now, as far as accessories go, they do all get the base plate with the little connector thingies. And um, I guess we'll just do each one individually. All right, so Celtic gets the extended spear and the collapsed spear. He gets the throwing star shuriken thingy. He gets the little dagger that does fit in the boot. And he has some alternate hands. So he comes with uh, two gripping hands on him in the package and then two open hands slash kind of grippy, a grippy hand. Uh, so plenty of accessories for him and then the chopper predator comes with the two skull spears he only has one clip on his back so maybe i don't know what's going on with that is one supposed to just be stuck in the hair i don't know that's a bit of a concern for me but we do get the two skull spears we get the shuriken we get the little dagger which does fit in his boot and we get the same spread of hands we get two gripping hands and uh, two open hands. And then lastly, for Scar Predator, he gets the big spear and the little spear, the dagger, the shuriken, and the same set of hands. So plenty of accessories, I would say, for this scale, no real problem there. Nine out of 10, nine out of 10. I guess you could maybe get some blast effects or something, but I think for the price point and the scale, that's perfectly fine. Now, as far as articulation goes, we already covered the fact that they basically have the same bodies. We don't need to worry about it too much. This guy does have the ex extra blaster, so we're gonna start with him. And I don't think I really need to show you the specifics of anybody else. They all have the same stuff going on. This guy's got everything included. All right, so we'll start with the blaster. Tiny little blaster. A couple little pins in there allow it to fold up nicely, and then you get the ball peg at the top to let it move around. It works surprisingly well without feeling super fragile for being as tiny as it is, so I love that. Their heads, I guess, well, I'll show you on this one. The heads move around pretty well. The dreads are pretty flexible. Uh, this guy's blaster obviously gets in the way, so I'll show you this guy too. They rotate no problem. They do lean up and down. Like, you get pretty good range out of these guys. You should be fine. For the shoulders, the shoulder pads are connected to the chest, so they don't really get in the way. You can rotate the arms all the way around, other than where the shoulder pads are. It's never ideal to have a shoulder pad do that because it's connected to the chest, but you'd still get your decent enough range. Bringing the arm out to the side, I am noticing these guys don't have any stuck joints so far that I've handled, and it's not just what I've done in this review. I've messed with them before the video too. So you get the arm out to horizontal, that's fine. The elbow joint is much improved over the past, so you get a full 90 degrees, but it's a much better joint, so that's cool. No looseness, slightly ratcheted, that's fine. The gauntlet can rotate, it's a floating piece. It doesn't open up or anything, but you do get the rotating gauntlet, and then you get the wrist on a little ball peg that moves around, that's fine. On this side, you get the rotating gauntlet as well, but you do have the extendy blades. They don't have like a ton of extension, but you do get that for... Uh, all three of them, I believe. Let me make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah, that one has it too. And this guy. So this guy also, uh, Chopper, he does not have the extendy blades because he has his cool big blades, so he doesn't need that. Okay, so let's move on to the torso. Uh, slightly limited because we do have this front armor piece that connects in the front, and then we have the back armor piece that connects in the back. So you get a ball peg, at least a single ball peg between the abdomen and the torso. Another one at the lower torso but you're fairly limited in what you can do. It's mostly just rotation, and this does separate, but it separates at the top rather than at the bottom, so you don't really wanna do that. So you wanna tuck that back in there and kinda of just don't pose them too much. The torso is very limited. For the hips, they go out to the side pretty well, just about 45 degrees, a little bit better, I'd say, than 45 degrees, and that's with me putting a decent amount of pressure on them. So decent range there, going forward, not a ton of range. That's definitely a little bit of a bummer. Not very far going forward at all. Going back just a touch. Thigh swivel, minimal. It's in there though. Double jointed knee is really nice compared to what we've seen in the past. Unfortunately, because the hips are limited, it's not gonna be used that much, but you get a really nice double jointed knee. And unfortunately, the ankles are still not great. They're not stuck like they used to be. You still get your rotation and your hinge though which is the reverse of what it should be. It makes it very hard to stand these guys. They need to flip that joint around so that they can get an ankle rocker out of it and the joint will be much more useful. So no stuck joints, no real problem areas, just limitations. So that's not really too much to complain about, I guess, at this scale, but it definitely could be better. 
and I think they are working towards that. We are seeing some improvement as they continue to make more and more figures. I'll give the articulation for these guys. Um, for the scale, a 7 out of 10. I think it's fine, but I definitely think it could be a lot better with simple things like flipping those ankle joints around. So, final verdict on these guys. Step one, get past the blue if you want to get them. If you don't like the blue, then it's a no-go. Non-starter. Nothing you can do about that. By the way, I did mention they all have the same armor. I meant the main armor. Obviously, this guy does have the extra piece in the front. These guys don't have that in the abdominal section. So there's slight differences. Whatever, you saw the differences. Uh, didn't need to review every single thing individually because you could see them for yourself. But yeah, they, they're really nice figures for the scale, for the price point. They're awesome. If you get past the blue, get them. I'll give them, if you're not counting the blue, I'll give them a nine. No, I'll give them an 8 because the articulation is limited. If you are counting the blue, I'm going to knock it down to like a 6 because they're very, very blue and they're supposed to be very, very clear. But they're still pretty darn cool. Like, I think he puts an incredible amount of work into these figures. The sculpt work, the detail work, they're really, really good. And I know people like to compare them to NECA just because they both make Predators. But why are you comparing a 7, 8-inch figure to a 4 or 5-inch figure? They're not, they're not comparable. They're two entirely different things. But these do have all the same details, just smaller. Like, they're really good for the price. I don't even care about this scale, but they're really, really good. So if you're into this stuff, don't sleep on these, or at least the line in general. If you don't like the blue, then sleep on these. If you do, then get them because they're freaking cool looking. So there it is. I gave you some ratings. Now you can do with that information whatever you want. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give, them a, give it a thumbs up if you didn't you can give it a thumbs down and if you haven't subscribed you should i have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel so make sure you come back for all of that and in the meantime keep collecting